Technical Writer HQ. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hey, Josh. Uh, first of all, thanks so much for having me. Uh, it's really great to be here. Um, so I'm a senior technical writer at Visa, and I work in an area called payment products development, and I work in the communications part of that particular area. And what we do is we basically produce um, technical documentation for all of Visa's clients. Uh, the biggest thing that we work on is something called the Global Technical Letter and Implementation Guide, or GTLIG. It's a mouthful, I know, but uh, it's this huge book that we produce two times a year. Uh, it's usually about a thousand pages for each book, and it covers all of the uh, updates and changes and uh, regulatory uh, updates to VisaNet um, that uh, we communicate to uh, Visa's clients to make sure that their systems are updated and ready to go with VisaNet. Um, so I specifically work um, in uh, the section that deals with implementation. So uh, this involves uh, test data, um, any um, fields or values that they might need to be aware of, and who they can contact uh, in terms of getting their systems activated and ready to go. I'm curious is, so you have this a thousand page piece of documentation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and how many people work on something like that? The team is massive. <laughs> um, so I think we are spread out across two cities and I think there are about, I would want to say uh, about up to 20 people at a time. Uh, each article in the book has two authors assigned to it. So one person assigned to the front matter, which involves the business overview, um, the impact to the uh, to Visa's clients, and then the back part of the article, which is where I come in, which deals with the, the technical information, um, the fields and the values and, and things like that. Um, and uh, we go through very rigorous review process. Uh, we produce three versions of the book. Um, and we all get together on a call and we usually spend eight hours a day on this phone call going through each and every article, making sure that it's locked down tight uh, because it, it's an audit item. You know, like if uh, mm -hmm. for any reason that, um, you know, uh, auditors come in and they want to uh, see how we're doing business, we have to come back to them and say, hey, you know, we obtained these approvals from our senior management reviewers and we obtained legal approval. Um, so, yeah, it's a really big undertaking and uh, it really does take a village to to get this thing over the line. And I'm curious is, you know, type of tools that you use to make a book like that happen. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when I think of Google Docs, I don't think that can really support something <laughs> like that. <you> know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we use um, Arbitext and it's uh, it's an XML based uh, authoring tool. Uh, we also use, in terms of managing our document repository, our file repository, uh, we use Documentum. And so it's we upload all our files there and then we check in, check out as we need to. Um, it's uh, We use a heavily modified version of Arbitext. Uh, it's, you know, we have all these custom fields and functions that um, honestly, uh, I'm... Uh, it's probably the product of many, many years of, of development. Um, and we're actually uh, working on transitioning over to a database authoring system, uh, which, as you can imagine, is a pretty big undertaking in itself. But um, oh, wow. yeah, that's definitely uh, the, the next step that we're moving towards. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. I, those types of pieces of documentation, there's so much to manage there. And then I'm mm -hmm. um, just curious of how that process goes with communicating with SMEs um, mm -hmm. to get something like that done. Uh, yeah. Like you were mentioning, it sounded like there was a number of SMEs, to say the least, yeah. mm -hmm. that be communicating with. Right. Yeah, we have uh, very good relationships with uh, product, uh, with the architects, with the developers, all the way through to client services and client configuration management. Um, and that's uh, thanks to you know our leadership. Um, you know, a lot of people in Visa have worked there for many, many years. And uh, with that comes the benefit of having really good relationships. Um, and it's also, you know, us up to us as writers to also maintain those relationships as well. Um, you know, being proactive and reaching out and making sure that we're covering all the information that needs to go into these articles and making sure that it's all correct. Um, 
getting their approval and also their buy-in when it comes to conducting um, article reviews. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different teams and a lot of different individuals that uh, we have to work with to make something like this happen. Wow. Um, and I know we've been diving into, you know, the documentation you've been working on, but would love to hear your story of, you know, how did you get here? Um, oh, sure. And, uh, yeah. So um, I didn't always get into technical writing. Uh, when I graduated, I graduated with a Bachelor of Information Technology. And um, I uh, was an IBM graduate. And I started out as a portals and content management consultant. Um, and honestly, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was moving from role to role, like I did some integration testing, I did some requirements engineering, and I was like, well, you know, I, I still don't know what I really want to do. And so I decided to hit reset and go teach English overseas in Japan. And that was a, a really good experience because, um, well, I met my wife there for one, but uh, the other thing was it really helped to affirm my love for teaching. Um, and on top of that, when I was in school, I loved writing. Um, I have all these different plays and uh, scripts and books that will probably never see the light of day. But I, I loved writing and I still do. And after I finished teaching in Japan, I thought to myself, well, you know, I like writing and I still like IT. Is there a career where I can combine the two? And I just happened to come across technical writing. Um, and so my very first job, it was a contract job. Um, at this large company in Australia, because I'm originally from Sydney, Australia. Uh, they, it was a company that was a food and drinks distributor. And they just needed someone to help write their, um, they have like guides for SAP. And they just needed someone to come in and refresh it, make sure the information is up to date, because their current technical writer had moved on to another role. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, why not? I'll give it a go. Um, at the time, I was freelancing, uh, doing some uh, article writing for an online games magazine. Um, and I also had some other article, some other documentation from an earlier job from an internship. And so I uh, tidied up those writing samples and um, yeah, they, they decided to take a chance on me. And that's how I managed to start off my career. Um, and that was about 10 years ago. Since then, I'd worked in a bunch of different in industries. Uh, I worked for a video game company. I worked for um, a company that dealt with uh, imaging products like cameras and scanners and copiers. Uh, I worked for an accounting software company. Uh, and then I moved to Austin, Texas, and uh, now I'm here working at Visa. Very cool. And, you know, I know we talked about um, a major piece of documentation that you're working on today. Yeah. But you've had a number of roles, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear about some of your other favorite pieces of documentation that you've worked on and yeah. what that looked like in terms of the communication, the documentation itself. Yeah, sure. So when I was working at that accounting software company, um, originally I was tasked to write um, you know, knowledge base articles and online help and release notes, which was fine. But then um, my manager came to me and said, hey, uh, we're, we're working on basically redesigning our software uh, in terms of its look and feel. How do you feel about user experience writing? And I was like, what is that? I, I have no idea what that is. And uh, he explained it to me and he said, well, you know, basically you will be writing for the user interface. You know, you'll be conveying the, the language of the product. Uh, you're going to be uh, sort of uh, uh, advocating for the user and helping them to learn how to basically do their taxes for their business. I was like, okay. And so, um, yeah, I, I didn't really know where to start at first. And so I developed relationships with the um, other UI designers. Um, and from there, I worked very closely with them to basically put words on the UI. And it was a really interesting, uh, you know, a uh, really interesting role. Um, you know, I was involved in um, the process where they were designing the wireframes and they would explain to me what they were trying to do, like the actual, um, you know, task that the user was doing. Um, and then I would, you know, think up some words to that might fit the situation. We would take it back to um, our test group and get some customer feedback uh, as to whether or not they actually understood what they were meant to do. Uh, but that was like a really interesting um 
role that I did. And uh, I really enjoyed, uh, I guess, coming up with um, the language of, of, um, uh, of an application, really. I found that really rewarding. And how's it been in terms of just working with different types of SMEs? It sounds like that has really changed from role to role. Mm. Um, were there any roles that you found particularly more challenging and any roles that you found maybe easier? And, and what were the reasons for that? Sure. Um, it really depends. In my experience, it really depends on, I suppose, the, the culture of the company and I suppose their attitudes towards documentation. I've been at some companies where the documentation uh, output is highly prized. Uh, for example, at Visa, you know, we, uh, this document is very well known and um, a lot of uh, a lot of people like inside the company and outside the company really rely on this document. Uh, so, you know, uh, the attitudes towards that output are very positive. Uh, I have worked at other companies where documentation is like a box you need to check off. It's like, well, you know, we have to write it. So, you know, let's give it over to Tim and then make sure that he, that, that it's done. Um, in terms of dealing with, you know, uh, people who may not necessarily see the value of documentation, um, it's, uh, I guess how I went about doing it was, um, uh, meeting with these people one-on-one -on -one. doesn't necessarily have to be like formal meetings, but just forming relationships with them as SMEs, like I, for example, if they were a developer um, and saying to them, Hey, look, you know, like here, like, by the way, like the stuff that we wrote, it got a lot of interests recently based on, you know, the stats that we pulled, um, you know, it sounds like people really want to learn more about this thing that you're building. Um, and it's, it can be a challenge, but uh, ultimately, um, uh, if, if you can work on improving your relationships with your SMEs and being present and uh, being there to also listen to their concerns uh, and making sure that, you know, their voice is heard in terms of, you know, what they feel may be important in terms of being communicated, um, that can uh, definitely help you uh, in terms of making sure that, you know, your work is recognized and that um, people recognize the value of what you give to an organization. That's so true. Um, and I'm curious of if you have any um, skills or I'd say like tips that you feel like have enabled you to have a success and longevity over a period of time with technical writing. Mm. Um, as sometimes, you know, people, they get into a certain field and they're like, you know, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. And, you know, for you to continue with your growth it says a lot about you and, and what you know. And uh, this skill sets that you may say, hey, this is uh, where I've been able to provide value and where I can really come in and, and keep my longevity. Yeah. Um, for, what worked for me was really putting my hand up for any opportunities that may have come along. Um, I mean, it's it's easy to just sort of stay really focused on you know, the the day-to-day -day output, you know, you you got to get these release now, release notes out, you got to get, you know, your usual deliverables out. But um, if, yeah, there's an opportunity where you can, even if you can improve your current process uh, as to how you do things, um, if there's like a way for you to maybe identify areas where uh, people may want to learn more about something, um, you know, maybe, it could take the form of like a developer digest. You know, maybe you could think up of a way where you can uh, showcase what you know your fellow you know teammates are working on, um, and turn that into like a little publication. Um, for me, I really enjoy trying to um, improve uh, my workflow. So, um, trying to do away with like manual processes. What can I sort of script away to sort of save me time so I don't have to get bogged down in sort of the day-to-day -day tasks? And that really gives me an opportunity to improve my own technical skills um, and feel more confident in uh, what I write and lends me some familiarity with uh, my conversations with developers. So if they're talking technical to me, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I've... Uh, you know, I, I have a bit of context there because I've done something similar uh, when, you know, I do my own exploration and, and my own self-teaching. Um, yeah, I think um, constantly 
keeping on top of you know technical trends, uh, making sure that your technical knowledge is up to date, um, and yeah, just not being afraid to put your hand up for tasks and broadening your horizons a bit. Um, yeah, hopefully, um, you know, it worked for me. Hopefully, it can work for you too. <laughs> and you know, one of the things you mentioned is uh, keeping up with technical trends. And when we look at the future of tactical writing, uh, there's a lot there to say the least. You know, I have sure. people talking about how AI is going to be part of tactical writing to some extent, or how uh, the world of information architecture is changing along with how we mm -hmm. see web design and also just new software coming out that's uh, enabling people to write better documentation that's more topic based and to pull it out. Um, is there any area of uh, the future of technical writing that you're keeping up with that you feel like is pretty cool? Um, well, right now, um, I'm very curious about uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, I think that um, uh, while it may take some time, I think that, uh, you know, the we're, us using phones and that sort of interface it could certainly progress in that direction. And I'm really uh, interested as to how technical writing can be applied there. Like how can we teach the user to interact in a virtual space? Um, and uh, I, uh, I think um, like, cause I have an, uh, I have an Oculus at home and as I'm using it, like I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know, like I wonder how I can teach someone to, you know, like, map out their space or uh, how like a certain app would work in VR and how would we, we be able to teach them? Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't necessarily take off your headset and then open up a PC to, to pull up a website to see how, how you're using it, right? Uh, I think that, um, you know, UI-based context contextually, uh, contextual help can um, definitely be the future in terms of technical writing. Um, and another thing that I'm interested in is gamification. So I feel like, um, you know, turning things into, um, uh, ma like making them more interactive, um, you know, making them in some cases more game-like, but um, having users be more actively, uh, participate more actively in their learning is definitely um, a step, is something that I, I'm keeping my eye on. And uh uh, I'd be very interested to see how technical writing can be applied there as well, because, um, you know, uh, I feel like there would definitely be um, a language change. There would be different ways of presenting information and engaging with uh, the the learner as well. Uh, so very interested in seeing um, how uh, technical writing could be applied there. Yeah. Wow. Um, that opens up a whole lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just going back to the virtual reality and seeing how do you present instructions in virtual reality is, mm -hmm. is, is something I don't even think uh, there are probably somebody's working on that problem right now. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and, and best of luck to them. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's a hard problem to handle. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm curious to um, one, it sounds like you've worked with, you know, sizable team from what you're saying. And uh, what are some of the traits that you've seen of new technical writers and their ability to succeed? So if you were like hiring mm. for a technical writer tomorrow and you'd be looking for maybe like a few traits, what would those be? Mm. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just having a think. So uh, we had uh, a couple of new starters, excuse me, a couple of new starters that recently joined our team. And what I was really impressed with was uh, basically um, not necessarily necessarily the speed at which they pick something up, but their willingness to, to learn and really ask a lot of questions and not be afraid to put their hand up. Um, if, if a technical writer sort of like keeps to themselves and tries to figure out everything on their own uh, without, um, you know, I guess validating what they may know, um, you know, I, I would encourage that writer to, you know, speak up and form those relationships because, you know, as a technical writer, like our level of understanding of, um, you know, an underlying technology or a, or a concept, um, you know, it's only as good as, as what we can extract from our SME, right? 
And so developing uh, those relationships and deepening those uh, relationships and asking questions when you need to um, is, is a really key skill. Um, when I first started in technical writing, um, I, uh, I mean, I made, I made manuals as part of my internship project, but uh, in terms of um, updating, like uh, it was an SAP demand planning manual. And I was like, man, like, how am I going to go about doing this? And so I, I really leaned on uh, a lot of other business analysts and SMEs, and they were very generous with their time, which I'm forever thankful for. Uh, but um, yeah, it was knowing that it was learning that I didn't know everything that I needed to. Um, and uh, I think making making peace with that and realizing that you can't be, you know, the expert overnight um, is uh, certainly a quality that I would look for. Um, and writing skills, you know, yes, it's, it's important. Um, I think uh, probably even more important than that is willingness to take on feedback um, and also learning what feedback is useful. Um, in my experience, a lot of people I work with uh, believe they can write. Um, most of them can. Others, I think there's an opportunity for improvement. But um, yeah, I think uh, uh, realizing that what you've written may not be perfect the first go and being willing to revise and, um, you know, rewrite uh, and uh, listen to your editor and be willing to, you know, apply changes where necessary. Um, I think that's definitely a big part of being a successful writer. Um, I think I've heard the term writing is rewriting. And I think that definitely holds true for my career. Yeah, I, you know, I agree with a lot of things that you've said. And um, I think many people here who are watching uh, this video and this interview, uh, they're wondering, you know, how did they break into particularly financial technical writing like you mm -hmm. did? And did you have a background in anything financial related? You said accounting, right? So mm -hmm. uh, a bit of a parallel. Um, and were there a couple of steps that you feel like you took right that signaled to Visa that you were the right person for mm -hmm. that role? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, well, when I spoke with my manager um, after I was hired, he said, yeah, like you working at an accounting software company uh, was, a, you know, it was one of the considerations because at least you had like a bit of um, like, um, background knowledge uh, in terms of like, you know, financial terms and um, I guess how, um, you know, like a, a balance sheet works and things like that. Um, but in terms of um, starting off in a, in a financial company, I think, um, I mean, uh, me working at the accounting software company was a factor. I don't think it was the factor. Um, I think um, having experience working across like um you know a wide variety of teams and products as well as having the technical knowledge to back that up like being comfortable working in um uh like different environments with different tools um and uh, also during the interview being able to know how to communicate with smes and maintain those relationships as well as knowing how to work with my other team members and um, knowing when to take something back to the drawing board. Um, I, I feel like uh, those are the skills that are important for being a good technical writer. Um, I, I, I feel like my manager saw more potential in that um, than just purely on the, on the basis that I, that I worked at that accounting uh, software company. Yeah, I think um, maybe it's track record of consistently getting projects done, you know, yes. sounds like across mm -hmm. like different areas. So it's almost this feeling of like, if we throw something at you, we're comfortable, you're going to get it done no matter what. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that would, that would, I'd like to think that was something that they thought. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of you to say. Um, so I know we covered a lot here. Um so for the people watching this video, most of them are looking to transition to technical writing. Is there anything that you want to leave them with? Um, any advice for to make that transition easier? Yeah. Um, let's see. I would say um, 
Um, if you don't already have one, I would work on your portfolio. Um, be really, uh, uh, I guess, um, you know, keep writing and uh, be critical of the things that you write. Um, uh, if at all possible, um, it might be a good idea to perhaps volunteer on some open source projects or even offer, you know, your services to like a small project saying, hey, like you may, they may have an API that needs documenting. You say, hey, like, um, you know, do you mind if I like contribute some, some work to your project? And um, I think having uh, solid real world um, uh, pieces of writing that you can show in your interview um, uh, or even like when you submit an application, uh, that would definitely work in your favor. Um, and the other thing is, if you're not already doing it, is to read. Um, I loved reading and reading really uh, gives you um, a feel for how language is used um, and it gives you a sense of um, uh, how to uh, structure your writing in a way that can be easily processed and is digestible. And, um, you know, it can, it can honestly improve like, uh, your writing skill. Um, I try to make a point to read at least a little bit every night. Um, doesn't matter what it is like, uh, fiction, nonfiction, technical, non-technical. Um, uh, I really try to make sure that I'm not just writing, but I'm also reading other people's work. Um, it exposes me to a lot more writing styles and, um, uh, you know, tones and audiences. And uh, I think that it, it really does uh, help me in my day to day. Yeah, I do think, uh, you know, most great writers read at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's like, you have to do both. You yes, no. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. And if for the people watching this video, if you want to go ahead and connect with Tim, his LinkedIn profile will be in the description below this video. So make sure to go ahead and check it out. And um, if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments. I'll be sure to check them after this video is published. And that way we can answer any questions you might've had during this video. Um, and that's it. We'll go ahead and rock and roll from here. And thank you for being here. All right. Thank you so much, Josh. Great to be here.